How's it going, everybody? Happy Friday to everyone. So the new server showed up today. I'm actually really happy about it. And I think I might have said it was an HP Pro Alliant. I was wrong. It's, an L, it's a Dell R810. It's a 2U server. It's actually pretty nice. I will see if I can't pull up the uh, the picture of it that I bought it from on eBay. Actually, give me a... I didn't think about that before I started the video. So we're going to just kind of wing it here. Go to Gmail real quick. So um, there's a couple questions that I want to go ahead and um, let's see, is this the one? View order details. Continue. Give me one second here. I'm pulling up eBay. My eBay. Uh, order history. That's what I'm on. Purchase history. There we go. And hidden. Huh. Anyway, I think I'll just pull up the This should load. What? Oh. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. That is weird. Anyway, um so let me just go to eBay directly. This will be so much easier. So I will bring this over to this screen here and let me go ahead and share my screen and pop in here so I bought a, it's a Dell R810 this is what I bought so this is basically what it looks like uh, let's see 7 pre-owned 40 core yep this is pretty much it this is the one that I bought uh, is it from the same person I can't tell where's the girl in Texas yes this is the server that I bought so uh, the, the reason yep yeah, this is it so this is the server that I bought uh, about a week ago um, it was a good deal I figured I would jump on it so it's a Dell power uh, Dell RA 10 uh, with four Xeon e7 4870 2.4 gigahertz it's 40 cores so it's four 10 core CPUs and 256 gigs of RAM. It has uh, six trays in it. It's a pretty nice little server. This is a different version of it. Um, mine has a little bit of damage here in the front, but you know what? It booted up, it, it runs fine. Uh, according to the seller, it was pulled out of a production environment. And uh, it didn't come with any hard drives in it, but I happen to have a couple of 300 gig uh, 10,000 RPM SAS drives. Um, in the basement, so I was able to just plug them in and go about my business. But that's what I bought. Um, and there was a couple questions. Let me go ahead and pull up the channel dashboard real quick. I won't actually show you the comments. Um, look at the comments. So the comment that came in is, what are you using this for? And I'm using this as a update to my existing environment. Pardon me, I was uh, a burp was stuck. So, um, so I bought it for that reason. Um, I wanted to have a, um, I have, I've been using Cisco UCS for a very, very long time. And, uh, don't get me wrong. I've had really good experience with UCS and all that type of stuff, but I wanted to take it to the next, um, not that I wanted a different server necessarily because I wanted a different server, but I had, um, with all of the stuff that I'm trying to demo for the real world networking course, um, all the videos I'm trying to record for that, and the VMware stuff that I'm learning, and just uh, all the labs that I'm trying to build out and stuff like that, I've found out that the servers, even though the servers I have are good, right? They, they get the job done and they're, they're worth the money that I paid for them. I'm just to the point now where I need something more... Uh, a more robust compute platform. So I had done a lot of research, and this was the first server that. Well, this is it was this in an HP Pro Pro Alliance um, DL580, I think. I think is what I was looking at. And let's see if I can't come from. Can't see what I was. So there was. Let's show up here. Yes, this is this is very similar to the one I was looking at. Uh, Dell PowerEdge 910. Um, 
Anyway, it's it's around. It's it was an HP ProLiant server. Is the other one that I was looking at. I, D, I think it was a DL five eighty, um, a G seven is what I was looking at. Something along those lines. And I had toyed around with the idea of buying that, and I was like, ah, I don't know. Just I'm not a big fan of really really tall servers, like four U servers and stuff like that. Just not a real big fan of them. This is a two U server, which means it's about that tall, about four inches or, or so tall. And it's a standard 19 inches wide and about three feet long. So I mean, it's pretty obvious on how it, it ties in. It's got a, uh, it's got six hard drive bays here in the here in the. Um, actually, let me get out of the way. It's got six hard drive bays right here, and then it's got a couple USB ports sitting right here. Uh, there's a uh, DB um, or a VGA port. So, and on the back side, there's a couple of Ethernet ports that I'm able to plug into and stuff like that. So, it gives me some, some latitude with what I'm trying to play with. So, that's basically what I went ahead and I did. Is I went ahead and I bought this server to play around with the technologies. And um, I went ahead and I got I installed ESXi on it. <coughs> Go ahead and log into the server real quick. So, it's pretty beefy. Uh, I installed EVE on it. Um, right now, so let's go ahead and just kind of take a look at this. Uh, it's pretty baller, so it's uh, it's probably the nicest system I've ever had. Uh, four uh, four sockets, ten cores per socket. Hyperthreading is enabled, so four times ten is forty. With hyperthreading, it gives you eighty processors, and I've got you bet your bottom dollar that says ninety six gigahertz, ninety six gigahertz of CPU. 256 gigs of RAM, and I added it in my uh, iSCSI SAN to it, so I've got my environment built out the way that I do. So um, things are working out pretty well. It's a I've only got one VM currently working on it right now. It's this Eve server, which I gave it 32 CPUs and 84 gigs of RAM, which I don't think I'll ever come close to using that much, but it allows me to build out pretty robust topologies like this. I mean, it doesn't look very big or very impressive. But when you've got, you know, any firewall that I want to run is basically is going to let me do, do the job. And so I'm still trying to build this one out. I'm, uh, I have a client that I'm working with. Actually, I should, I should say I have a few clients that I'm working with that have rather involved network um, environments. And I am looking at growing the lab to kind of mimic their environment because there's a lot of technologies I deal with day in and day out that I need to spend more time on and this is really going to let me do this. So I'm also going to be taking the old topology that you guys might have seen from the real world networking series where I build out a very large environment. As a matter of fact, I don't know if it'll show up here. I'll, I'll show you the, I don't know if it'll show up. I'll show, I'll pan my, my camera around. Oh, the camera's stuck. Yeah, you guys aren't going to be able to see that. Anyway, there was a, uh, a network diagram that I dreamed up probably a couple months ago, if not a little bit longer ago than that, um, where I wanted to come up with a, uh, a larger network diagram that would allow me to play around with a, a large implementation. Basically, simulate a big campus LAN, a data center, uh, a service provider, um, a lot of WAN connectivity and stuff like that. And that was my goal, was to have something really robust that I could like start from one side and work my way all the way through and cover a bunch of different things. You know, Palo Alto, VMware, Cisco, you know, the, the whole nine yards, NSX, VMware. I think I said VMware. But, and that's what I plan on doing. So this, this lab that I've got right here is going to help me do a lot of my... Cisco training for NSX or Cisco training for NSX. Uh, Cisco training for data center on the Nexus platform. As I want to do a much deeper dive onto VXLAN than I already have. Matter of fact, this is a customer environment as well that I'm working on that's down here. It's out of out of sight, out of mind that I'm working on. But this this is for VXLAN multipod down here, where this is going to be VXLAN um, multi-site and a rather involved version of it. So basically as somebody that works for a Cisco partner and I end up having to play around with a lot of different technologies, I'm trying to take my technical skills uh, beyond where they're at today and really understanding how this protocol works because I have a lot of customers that are deploying VXLAN. I have to know it. I am becoming more of a 
um, a pre-sales engineer where I'm talking to customers about how they're going to do stuff as well as doing the implementation. So I'm kind of batting on, batting on both sides of the project as well as just being the technical engineer that's implementing the solutions. So to me, it's more about being that really have a really strong understanding how VXLAN works, but also being really good at NSX, um, being really good at VMware. And so it takes a lot of effort. So the other servers that I have, so I've got four other servers. The other four servers, I'm going to convert them. Uh, so the instances of Eve that are running on them currently, I'm going to basically take them out and I'm going to kind of massage and adjust their their configurations so that they'll be uh, more of a real world network that you're going to see and not the traditional, and I don't mean to bag on anybody or make fun of them or insult anyone, but instead of taking a network diagram that you would see from like a CBT Nuggets or an INE and just focusing strictly on a particular vertical of technologies, you know, whether it's route switch, security, data center, I want to be able to build a lab environment inside of Eve that is going to mimic the look and feel of an actual co uh, corporate network. Corporate network that's going to have a cloud a, a cloud presence, that's going to have a uh, firewalls and VPNs and a bunch of other stuff with the intention of work, walking through a bunch of different scenarios on that, which was the original intent. And I don't know if I have the uh, lab pulled up at the moment, but as I was going through and testing some of the stuff out, I was like, hmm, I wonder if I could pull that off. So, like I said, in the, the real world networking video about what it's like to be a real world engineer, one topology on its own isn't going to do the job. But if you can come up with a bunch of different variations of the same topology with different requirements, because you're never going to get this, the uh, same two clients that want the exact same thing, right? You're going to, the, the protocol can do a particular thing or a pair of features, but if you want to take it beyond that, you're going to have to probably tear down that lab and after you get some a particular variation of it working and then spin up a new lab that's going to be able to take care of a different version of that. Well, my goal is to build large enough topologies to where I can build one really big lab and test out both of them so I can do it before and after and stuff like that so that it, I can see exactly how it all comes together. So it's more important to me to see how this stuff works out that way than it is to go out and try to do other stuff like sm smaller labs with a concentration of a particular vertical or a particular technology. So that's kind of how I look at it because the, lo the more time I can focus on one area, and one topology and get it up and running and then work through it and see exactly how it's working and all that type of stuff. That's the stuff that you really need as a, somebody that's going to be working in production. I, I do a lot of labbing and I have to because of my job, because of the customers that I work with. They're expecting me to be able to bring solutions to the table. And um, I could tell you that having come from the last few years of working in a, a CCNA level training company where CCNA is the deepest that they went, um, which was detrimental to me as a, somebody that's gone above and beyond that, There, I'm having to go back and basically refresh my technical understanding of a lot of things. Like I remember a lot of things, but because I didn't use them for so long and I wasn't challenged, I was never, the, the reality of it is my last job as a technical instructor I was never challenged beyond the level of a CCNA, which was always really easy to answer. But because I was never challenged beyond that, some of the more advanced networking that I'm doing today, well, I should say just about all of the advanced networking I'm doing today has been challenging for me to to work at because I'm, I haven't worked at that level in such a long time. It's taking me longer than I thought I would to get up to there. So I'm spending a lot of time spinning up and spinning down labs, testing stuff out. Because somebody that has one of these things, there's an expectation that you're going to know what you're talking about and you're going to know what to do. And so sometimes I have to tell a customer, I'm not really sure what to do right now. I can take it offline, put it into a lab and see if I can figure it out. But at the end of the day, that's my job is to figure it out. So that's one of the reasons why I bought the server. It's going to give me a lot of room to grow. And if push comes to shove, I have no problem buying a second server 
and another I did, what did I spend about 900 bucks uh, spend another nine hundred dollars and buy another server that's just like it and have a hundred and eighty gigahertz of compute so the possibilities are pretty much endless for me right now and I'm finding higher uh, higher compute capacity is going to benefit me long term so that's basically how I'm looking at it it's going to give me a lot of flexibility as I move forward as well so that's basically how I see it so hopefully I'll be able to get a lot of these labs built and test it out and stuff like that and I'm going to start uh, cranking out some content because I'm really getting back into it I'm uh, actually doing a refresher on VMware NSXT as we speak so hopefully I'll have some I'll start cranking out some content on that here very very soon and then same thing with the real world networking series I'm working on that I was kicking around the idea of doing a PowerPoint presentation style delivery on that for the the course the the education that uh, and the uh, the the technical pieces that you need to know the the course and the design and then have the labs and the testing and migration pieces to it um, have them more freeform but I don't like death by PowerPoint so I'm still working through some of the logistical pieces to it but I'm going to start releasing content here pretty pretty soon um, it's just been uh, pretty busy with getting everything else squared away so I'm going to keep this video kind of short I know we're almost 20 minutes already but um, that's basically what it is that I've what I've been doing I'm really happy with the new server I'm going to continue spinning up these VMs and um, taking a look at it because I'm I really want to know how far I can take if I can get everything up and running in this lab if I get everything running in this lab I want to know what the server can handle is it a even G limitation or is it a VMware ESXi limitation I'm going to go lean the e, the Eve limitation not the server because I can probably run multiple instances of Eve and be just and be all right so I'm looking at playing around with it I'm going to spin all these boxes up and see how they work out and I will report back with my findings so if you guys have any questions for me please let me know in the comment section below i want to thank everybody for stopping by have yourself an awesome weekend enjoy it stay safe out there enjoy your weather i'll catch everybody in the next video